Good evening. Hello, good evening, guys. Well, welcome once again to the class, guys. I hope every one of you had a great day, that every one of you is safe at home. So thank you once again for being on time. Um, as, always, uh, as, as I always tell you, that's part of some responsibility that you show when you enter some minutes before the class. Thank you very much for that. So guys, uh, today we're going to see a new topic, but first of all, I would like to ask you some questions regarding to the topic that we saw yesterday, as usual. You know, I always do that in order for me to verify if you were able to understand what we saw yesterday. Yesterday class was not as difficult well, it was not that difficult actually because I know every one of you knew a little bit about the topic. But let me ask you a question. How many uh, forms or how many types of questions can we do when we use the simple present, guys? Two forms. Two forms. All right, so let me see. Uh, Cecilia Melgar. Yes, teacher. What is formula or what is the form number two when it comes to creating questions in simple present? Okay, uh, the first or two? Number, oh, number, number two. Number two, okay. Uh, question word, auxiliary, uh, subject, uh, verb, rest, uh, and as well. An answer. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. Uh, Jenny Sanchez, how do we make questions using formula or structure number two? Number one, I'm sorry. Number one. Uh, please give me a second. Okay. <clears throat> I don't remember and I can't find. Okay, it's okay. Just let me see. Lisette, what about you? What do you remember about it? How can we make a question or what is the structure that you need to follow in order to create a question using formula number one? Um, um, I think uh, the actuality uh, plus pronouns plus verb plus mm -hmm. complement the auxiliary Maybe. plus verb no plus. no auxiliary mm -hmm. plus pronouns mm -hmm. plus verb mm -hmm. plus complement plus complement okay mm -hmm. let me ask you a question Luis when I use formula number two uh can I use short answers Short answer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Could you repeat me? When I use formula or a structure number two, can I use short answers? No. Why not? We don't have auxiliary in that formula two. We don't have auxiliary. Are you sure that we don't have auxiliary? In formula two? Mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see. Jacqueline, what do you think? Do you agree with what he said? You know. Why not? Uh, because it is a long answer. answer. A long answer, and why? Uh, because... Uh, um, we uh, the question uh, for example uh, it could be uh, for example in the examples of the the, the, the photograph um, mm -hmm. uh, to appears what do you play on your computer yeah. the long answer is I play games on my computer okay yeah okay the, do you want to say something Jenny I see that you raise your hand because we use a WH question. 
because we use a WH question, do we have or do we use auxiliary in structure number two? Do we use? Hello? Repeat again the question, please, teacher. Do we use auxiliaries in uh, structured or formula number two? Yes. Yes, we use. All right. Now, with that being said, all of you guys right now, I need you to give me an example. Well, type it on the chat. Each one of you, an example using structure number two. Okay, I will need to, you, we are 18 right now, including me. So it means that I will see 17 questions. Did you understand what I said? Please repeat me. Okay, so I said that I need you to type in the chat of this call, one example of a question using a structure or formula number two, right now. Understood, guys? Okay. Okay, I see. Already got Cecilia. Jacqueline, thank you very much. Luis Enrique. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I can see guys, okay. Let's, let's have a look this time. Okay, good. I'm still missing. Let me see. I'm still missing. Who's missing here? Patricia. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So now let me ask you a question. Let me see. Uh, who else? Who was here? Who was, let me see. Luis. Why does your question says, what are your age? What are you trying to say with that question? Okay, to, I'm asking the age. The age. The age. So the age. now, question for so, everyone. Question Guys, for if he said, that what are your age? Do you what think, are, guys, that, that is correct? Guys, hello. The correct all of Yes. Okay, Luis, the purpose of doing this question, it was to use what we learned yesterday. And as you can see there, you didn't use the auxiliary do or does to make the question. So in that case, the question that you made, it is a question with the verb be not a question with the simple present. Okay, I think I, I forgot the, mm -hmm. 
the structure. Okay, also, Claudia okay. said, I can see here that you use a question with the verb be as well. You are not using a question in the simple present. Rufino, you are too. You are using a question with the verb be, but you are not using a question in the simple present. Why? Because questions in simple present will always have the auxiliary do or does according to the pronoun. Okay. Also, Claudia Iraeta, when you say, what do you meet your boyfriend? What are you trying to say with that question? Okay, so in that case, mm -hmm. um, the auxiliary do, donde conociste, o donde... So if you say donde, first of all, the WH question is not correct because you're saying what? Because donde is where. So where do you meet your boyfriend? That's the first part. Then if you're saying conociste, it means that that is past. Es pasado. Okay, so we cannot use that where do you work okay carlos Dubon, thank you very much patricia okay claudia lisette thank you very much for giving me another example using the uh, simple present so why are you guys getting confused between questions with the verb be and questions with the simple present is there any particular reason why you get confused or it was only just because you didn't remember the, the structure. Was it because of that or just a little confusion that you had today? Guys, am I talking to myself today? Siento que estoy hablando conmigo mismo. Teacher, dice, puede repetir, pero no acabo de entrar, así que no entiendo nada ahorita. Okay, so um, I was asking in general, this question in general. What is the problem that you had today confusing questions with verb be with questions in simple present? Was it because you forgot the structure or because you got confused today. What's the issue? Teacher, yo pienso que por la prisa en, en que de pensar rápido es que nos confundimos. You think so? Okay. Okay, that's your opinion. What about you, Rufino? Why you got confused? We, well, I cannot listen to you because your, your microphone is off. Okay, thank you. Uh, I don't remember a, a structure. It's, no, okay. Uh, my confusion. Okay, probably, mm -hmm. okay. But that's good. So, um, well, my only suggestion for you guys is to try to, to study or just to keep those structures in your mind. Remember, something very easy that can help you to remember things is that when you use questions in simple present, you will always have to use auxiliary do or does. That's a must, okay? Simple present. But if you use a question with the verb be, that's a whole new story. That's completely different, okay? Are we clear on that? Yes, teacher. All right, yes. guys. Today we yes. are going to see grammar. Today we're going to be focusing in some grammatical stuff. So please, if you have questions during the class, feel free to ask questions. Because this is going to be grammar. So today we are going to see the model verbs 
uh, probably when you listen to this topic, you might be thinking, what is that? Because uh, normally you use them in your daily basis, but sometimes it is difficult for you to understand how to make questions with them. But today we are going to try to learn as much as we can. So can everyone see the, the slides? Yes. All right. So first of all, we're going to start by defining what a model verb is. I will need a volunteer, please. Me, teacher. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, what are modal verbs? Modal verbs express modality, um, ability, um, possibility, necessity. Ah, uh, I no sé cómo se pronuncia esta palabra, teacher. Necessity, 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 probability, obligation, or other conditions. Okay. Thank you very much. So guys, today we're going to learn how to use all model verbs that we have. We are going to go like in general information because this topic you will see it later on with a lot of more detailed information. So for you to know, model verbs are always going to express modality, ability, possibility, necessity, probability, obligation, and other conditions. Always they are going to give us conditions, okay? So for you to get in context about what are we talking about, these are model verbs. Examples, I can cook Italian recipes. This little word here, can, it is a model verb. You could use my pen. This little word, underlined is a model verb. I would like a cup of coffee, please. The little word underlined, it's a model verb. So here, as you can see, we have just general examples, but now it gives you an idea about what are we going to talk about. So let's continue. A general information in something, guys, that you will always have to remember about model verbs is that they are complementary verbs. They are model verbs and the verbs, the model verbs do not work without another verb. Never, ever. So keep that in mind. Los model verb guys nunca van a trabajar si no van a la par de otro verbo. Never, never. So in that case, it, will, it won't make sense. If they are by themselves, it won't make sense. So they will, uh, it will always be necessary to have another verb. So it will make a whole sense or the sentence will make sense. Another important thing to remember, guys, is that model verbs are never conjugated. Never. Never. Even though you use in the third person, if you are using the third person and you are using a model verb, you won't have to modify them because they have no tense and they cannot be modified. Are we clear in these two rules, guys? O sea, teacher, que por ejemplo, cuando estamos hablando de tercera persona, no le vamos a agregar, agregar lo que le agregamos en simple present. Never. Siempre el verbo en su forma base. Mm -hmm. okay. Siempre porque siempre que lleve un model verb, el model verb nunca puede ser conjugado y no tienen tiempo. Por ende, el verbo siguiente siempre estará en su forma base. Okay? So, if there's no any other question, let's continue. Here we have the structured or formula that you will need to follow in order to create positive sentences. 
Let's see. Subject, are you with they, he, she, it. Model verb, should and can. Verb and complement. You see? Examples. You should go to the museum. You should go to the museum. She can eat pizza. As you can see, you can notice, even though we're talking about she in third person, but because we have a model verb, we cannot modify the verb. We are only going to modify the verb if we talk about simple present. Are we clear? Yes. Yes, teacher. All right. Any question with the positive sentences? No, teacher. All right. So let's move on. Here we have do not modify the verb in third person. That's clear right now. So how do we make sen negative sentences? Easy. Subject, I do with they, he, she, it. Model verb, not, verb, and complement. Examples, you should not go to the museum. Or you can use a contraction and you can say, you shouldn't. You shouldn't go to the museum. You should not go, you shouldn't go. You can use she can't or she cannot eat pizza. She can't or she cannot eat pizza. All right, so keep in mind the abbreviations and also the long things so you, you can learn both. So any question with the negative ones? Teacher, mm -hmm. that verb, that model verb, can, there is not a space with the negative. Oh, you can, you, can, you can use both, actually. You can say cannot together, and you can also make a space between can, space, not. Both of them are correct. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. All right. Any other question? Well, no questions. So also, if we use model verbs, we can also make questions. So how do we make questions? Let's see. We can use a WH question, a model verb, a pronoun, a verb, and the question mark. We have two ways to form that. This is the first one. WH question plus model verb plus the subject or pronoun plus the verb plus the question mark. Example, where should we go? Where should we go? What can you eat? What can you eat? Any questions so far? Can I use it when, what, and can? I'm sorry? Can I use it when, what, and can? Mm. Do, you, do you mean the WH question? Can I use it when? Or what and use it can. Oh, uh, yes, you can use where all WH questions you know. You can say where, what, why, how, who, every, all of the WH question with wow. the model okay. verbs. Yeah. The only okay. thing that you have to remember is the formula. So you can use any WH question, any model verb. And as long as you're following the formula correctly, it will be correct. Okay, thank you. All right. So let's move on, guys. This is number two. 
to make a question, now it is a little bit different. Why? Because as you can see here, we are not longer using a WH question. Right now, we are only using the model verb first, then the subject or pronoun, then the verb, and then complement. What is missing there? The question mark. So, we have, should we go to the museum? Should we go to the museum? Can you eat pizza? So, as you can see, there's two ways all of creating questions. One using a WH question and one only using the model verbs at the beginning. So with that being said, guys, any questions so far? No teacher, no question. Teacher, tengo una pregunta. Este, el shall y el might son modal verbs. Yes, they are. We are going to see also a model verb. Yeah. Yes, they are model verbs, so we are going to try to find out each one of them today. Oh, okay. All right. Y so pero estos, eh, perdón, perdón que lo interrumpí. Este, mm -hmm. Pero esos también los puedo ocupar en, en preguntas. Yeah, we're going to see some examples later on. Okay. All right. So here we have all the list of model verbs. The model verbs that we have in English are 10 model verbs. This is the list. Can, could, may, might, will, would, shall, should, must and ought to, ought to. Listen to the pronunciation once again. Can, could, may, might, will, would, shall, should, must and ought to. Let me ask someone right now about the pronunciation. Patricia, Veronica, can you make the pronunciation of all of them please? All all of them, yeah. Can, cold, may, mm -hmm. Mike, will, Walt, shall, should, mm -hmm. must, all two. All right, so thank you very much, Patricia. So in this one, guys, and we do not say could, we say could, we do not pronounce the letter L. May. As, as, as the month, might, will, would, we do not pronounce the letter L, would, shall, should, we do not pronounce the letter L as well, must, and ought to, okay? So let me see someone else, Tatiana Plites, can you go ahead, please? Can, cool. May, might, will, could, shall, should, must, is it nothing? Ought to. Ought to. Okay, thank you very much. Maria Luz de Nieto, go ahead, please. Okay. Can, could, may, might, will, would, can, shall. should. Child, thanks. Uh, should, must, ought to. Ought to, okay. Thank you very much. Let me see Lisette Montoya. Can you please go ahead? Uh, can, could, my, may, may, might, will, would, shall, should, must, Auto. Thank you very much. Really nice pronunciation, he said. Thank you very much. So let me see. Someone else would like to participate on making that pronunciation? Jenny Sanchez, go ahead, please. Can, could, may, might, 
will, would, shall, should, must, ought. Eh, ese no me acuerdo. Ought to. Ought to. But thank you very much. It was a really nice pronunciation as well. Someone else? Someone else would like to participate? Adriana? Oh, Estela? Can, uh, can, could, may, might, will, would, shall, should, must, and ought to. Thank you very much. Estela, please go ahead. Can, could, may, might, will, will, die, shall, should, shall, must, Okay. okay, thank you very much. So guys, these are the 10 model verbs that we use in English. So today we're going to try to go one by one to see some examples or on how you can create some questions. Some of them are kind of similar. So pay attention so you don't get confused, okay? So let me see, I can see someone else. Oh, Cecilia, do you have a question? Sí, teacher, eh, ¿qué significan eh, las del lado derecho? Como eh, show eh, y out to. Oh, just wait a minute. So we're going to go one by one. So I will be telling you that what they mean, okay? Okay. All right, so let's start. We're going to start with can. We have the model verb can and we have the meaning. Veronica de Martinez, help me reading the meaning, please. I can see. You can can't see? Write? Can't you drive? I can speak English. Can no, no, no. Help me? No, the meaning, please. Oh, sorry. To, to be able to indicate indications ability. Or possibility. All right. So as you can, as you know, guys, every one of you knows can because that's the most the most common one. So can indicates ability or possibility or to be able to do something. We have some examples. I can't swim. I can you drive? I can speak English. Can you help me? Right. So this one doesn't need too much explanation because this one is very easy. Okay, are we clear on this one, Ken? Este es fácil, creo que todo lo utilizamos. Yes. All right, so no questions? No. All right, so let's move on to could. What is the difference between saying can and could? Very simple. If you use could, it's a more polite way to say podrías, right? Podrías, but that only going to happen when it is positive, cuando está en positivo. For example, in example number one, it says Joe could speak when he was young. John podía hablar o podría hablar cuando él era joven. But in example number two, cuando al could le agregamos la palabra not, ya no se traduce como podría, sino como pude. See? For example, in number two, I say, I couldn't sleep last night. No pude dormir anoche. No pude dormir anoche. Right? I couldn't sleep last night. That only going to happen when could comes together with the word not to make it negative. In that moment, it's going to be uh, used as the past tense of can. Are we understanding, guys, the idea of that? Yes, the chair. All right, so we have example number two. Could you play an instrument when you were a child? 
podías o podrías tocar un instrumento cuando eras un niño. So this one is just, it can be considered the past tense of can, obviously when you use it in negative way, okay? So if there is no questions with that, so let's move on to the next one. Uh, this one, guys, I forgot to tell you that we can also use it as a possibility. Example, it can be, I think it could rain later. For example, if you say that you're using could in that case to mean a possibility for the future. What do you understand when I say, I think it could rain later? Pienso que podría llover. Que podría llover después. Okay, that's it. All right. So it's not that complicated, actually. So let's move on to May. Let me see. Uh, Jenny Sanchez, please help me reading the meaning. Used just to indicate possibility in the future. Used to indicate possibility in the future. So may, it also means, también significa podría, but in this case, it's more used when you want to speak in a very polite or professional way. Like in example number one, it says, she may pass the test. What do you understand by that? Ella tal vez pase el examen. Ella yes. tal vez, okay. She may pass the test. It will be, ella podría pasar el test. The meaning, el significado es similar al de could, cuando damos una possibility for the future. Con la diferencia es que may es usado generalmente para una forma más profesional o educada. So you're going to use may only if you want to sound, si usted quiere sonar bien profesional when you're speaking English, you can use may to say something or to indicate a possibility for the future. So number two, it may snow tomorrow. It may not, I'm sorry, it may not snow tomorrow. What do you understand by that? Podría no nevar mañana? Exactly. As you can listen, even, even when you translate that, it's kind of very professional and more polite. Also, example number three, it's something very used. In the States or Americans love to use that question when they want to be very polite with you. They say, may I come in? Because I could say, can I come in? Yo podría utilizar can ahí, podría decir, can I come in? Puedo entrar? Pero en ese caso yo le estoy dando de una sola vez a la, estoy haciendo una pregunta, pero cuando utilizo may, yo estoy siendo muy profesional Muy educado, y lo estoy diciendo, podría entrar. That's the only differences that we have with the model verse between can, could, and may. So with all this information being said, do you, have, do you guys have any question or something that you would like me to tell you? No question. All right. There's no questions. Let's move on. So, might. Uh, it says it's a synonym of mate. It also indicates possibility in the present or the future. It says my sister might come from her birthday, for my birthday, I'm sorry. So when we say that it's a synonym, synonym of may, it, it means that might will also have the same meaning as may. Okay? Va a tener el mismo significado. So my sister might come from home for my birthday, okay? You might not arrive on time. It might be better to finish this now rather than wait until tomorrow. Okay? 
Is there any question regarding to might? Teacher, can you repeat the uh, model verb might? Might. Might is going, well, the meaning or uh, is going to be the same as may, the meaning. And the use is going to be pretty much the same as may. Why? Because both of them, may and might, are synonyms. Do you know what a synonym is? Si sí sabemos lo que es un sinónimo, right? Yes. Okay, yes. so keep yes. that in mind. Might is going to be a synonym of may. So with that being said, we are going to always remember that when you use might, is as if you are using may. That's pretty much the same thing and the same use that we have. Okay. Entonces, teacher, siempre significa podría. Exactly. De una forma educada también. Exactly. Oh, no. mm -hmm. Okay. So, normally, normalmente, las personas prefieren utilizar may porque might es como la versión antigua del idioma. ¿Sí? Normalmente la versión más actual que se utiliza para, in the polite way, para forma educada es may. Pero hay personas eh, de edad que nativas del idioma o incluso en libros, en your books or something, if you go to any website or something like that, you should or you could find, podrían encontrar might. Pero dado que ya saben que es may, Automatically, you will know that they both are synonyms. All right. Uh, as we can see here in the red letters, it says might can also be used like may when to ask permission, but it is much common in British English than American. So, yo podría decir might I come in? Might I come in? Podría decirlo, ya que may I come in, ya que los dos son sinónimos, podría decirlo. But, generalmente los únicos que utilizan might I come in son británicos, no americanos. Ellos utilizan may. Okay, that's, that's what it's saying in the red letters. Are we clear? Yes, teacher. Siento que me dicen yes solo porque sí, ¿verdad? No, porque si les hago preguntas right now, I don't know if you're going to be able to tell me the truth. But let's move on. I will assume, asumiré que ese yes, todos dijeron yes. Ella dijo yes por todos. All right. So shall. Shall. It says that we use it like will to express the future. Do we know, do you guys know, sin, ya saben cómo se utiliza will or you have never seen how to use will? No? Do you will have any? Yes. For, for, for future, yeah. Uh -huh. That's pretty much for the future. So shall, shall es un sinónimo de will. Sí, por lo tanto, if I use shall, it's going to be also for the future. ¿Cuál es la diferencia, guys, between will and shall? Will es la nueva, eh, como la nueva versión del idioma y shall es la antigua. Generalmente, antes se, en el idioma se utilizaba shall instead of using will. But, you know, grammar and structures, gramática and everything have changed. Todo ha cambiado. So, But we, we can still see some books, some sites, algunos sitios de internet, still using shall. But you can use both. It really doesn't matter. And both of them are correct. So the examples that we have is, are, I'm sorry, I shall be at your wedding. What do you understand by that? Probablemente va a estar en tu... ¿Vos? Probablemente esté. Si decimos que lo utilizamos como el will, 
para future. Y yo digo, I shall be at your wedding. Estaré. Estaré en tu boda. Estaré en tu boda. I shall be at your wedding. Because we're obviously using it as will. Because both of them are for future. So, uh, example number two. You shall not go to the party. Shall we go to the theater tomorrow? So, with that being said, guys, it is, it is understandable. Is it understandable for you? Is it easy? You understood what I'm saying? Yes. All right. Yes. Perfect. Supongo que todo está clear as the word. Perdón. All right. So, we have model verb should. It says that we use should to indicate a recommendation or obligation or a reflection of an opinion to know what is right or correct. What does it mean, guys? As you can see here, as you can see here, this little picture, it says should equals to deber o debería. That's the meaning, okay? equals to deber o debería, because that is part of indicating a recommendation. So if I say, I should call my parents more often, what do you understand by that? Debería llamar a mis padres más seguido. Más seguido, más a menudo. Thank you very much, Rodrigo. You should practice more if you want to learn English. Esta es indirecta para todos, ¿verdad? You should practice more if you want to learn English. What do we understand by that sentence? Deberías practicar más si quieres aprender inglés. Excellent, okay? Remember that you should practice more if you want to learn English, okay? So also, you can say you should take your medicine. Why do we use should in the third one? Because we are giving our recommendation to someone. Keep that in mind. Every single time that you are going to use should is because you are giving a recommendation to someone or a kind of obligation to someone else, okay? Are we clear on this part of should? Yes, teacher, it's clear. Okay, yes. perfect. So we go to R2. R2, it's the same as using should. Es lo mismo que utilizar should. Sí, son sinónimos. Which is the difference, guys, between should and ought to? ¿Cuál es la diferencia? De nuevo, ought to, lenguaje antiguo, and should, lenguaje moderno. ¿Sí? Normally or nowadays, hoy en día, ought to está casi a un punto de desaparecer, but generally, you could probably find them in some books. Generalmente lo van a encontrar en obras, uh, like books, or probably, probably in any website or something like that, probably. But most of the time, um, we use should instead of saying ought to, okay? But they both mean the same thing. So as you can see there, it says synonym of should. Although it's less common, más común, menos común. So we have example number one. She ought to go with her sister. What do you understand by that? Ella podría ir con su hermana. Podría? Debería. 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 Why? Because it's a synonym of should. What about we ought not to assume the worst? No deberíamos asumir el error. Lo peor. O lo peor. Mm -hmm. You ought to be more polite. What do you understand by that? You ought to be more polite. Debería ser más educado. 
Excellent. So as you see, <clears throat> model verbs are not complicated. And I really don't know if you notice that every single time that you're just using a model verb, the main verb, it will never be conjugated, even though you're using third person. I hope that you all notice that. Espero que todos se hayan dado cuenta. Por eso vimos las reglas antes. So we can go one by one and trying to learn as much as we can. So, is it clear, guys? Chef, yes, what is the meaning although? Although. Uh-huh. Oh, this word right here? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Although means aunque. 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 Although. Is less common. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's move on. We have must. Must. Must, it's usually used to indicate an obligation, prohibition in the negative or necessity. It's a synonym of have to in affirmative sentences. What is synonymo de have to? Tener que. Tener que. But la diferencia entre have to and must es que cuando usted utiliza have to es porque le está dando un 50-50 de obligación. Pero, but if you use must, si tú utilizas must, es porque sí o sí lo tienes que hacer. It's obligation 100%. 100% de obligación. Are we clear on that part? Yes. 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 All right. So we have example number one. It says, you must read this book. It's fantastic. Or I could say, you have to read this book. It's fantastic. Conociendo la diferencia entre los dos, los dos significan must and have to, they both mean tener que. But now you know the difference. Have to is because you're giving to that person 50-50, 50%. But if you say must, es porque esa persona lo hace o lo hace. See? There's no other way. So... Example number two, you must not drink and drive. What do you understand by that? No debes. Debes tomar y manejar. Excellent. All right. So is there any question with this one? Must? Yes, teacher. What's the question? You have questions, Lisa? No, no question, teacher. Oh, no questions. Okay. No, no question, teacher. Ah, okay, okay. All <laughs> right. So we go with wood. And this one, guys, with wood, we normally use it to make a request with kindness or also to help the point out of contents actions in the past. Normally, guys, what this model verb do, lo que generalmente hace este model verb, es que al verbo le da la terminación iría. For example, si yo tengo would visit, es visitaría. I would like, gustaría. If I have would buy, compraría. Right? Are we understanding that? But that's only when we translate it. Okay? Yes. So, if we have example number one, it says, I would like a cup of tea, please. I would like a cup of tea, please. What do we understand by that? Me gustaría una taza de té, por favor. Excellent. Would you like to taste it? Te gustaría probar. Te gustaría lavar. Lavar. 
Probar. No, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Probar, probar, probar. No, it's okay, it's okay. All right, so I think that this one is really simple, guys. Just keep in mind that every single time that you use would is because you're making a request. Es porque le están solicitando, le están pidiendo, cuando lo hacen en forma de pregunta, es porque le están pidiendo o le están solicitando a alguien algo con amabilidad. Because if you say, if you ask to someone, would you like to taste it? ¿Te gustaría probarlo? You're saying, le está solicitando algo a alguien con amabilidad. ¿Ok? And also, remember that when you use would plus a verb, you, well, the model verb would, le va a dar al verbo la terminación, ría. ¿Ok? Are we clear on that part? Yes. Claro, es como el agua. Man. All right. So, and once yeah. again, we finished with the 10 model verbs. Y con eso, terminamos los 10 model verbs. Now, here, we, here I have questions for you. Aquí vienen mis preguntas. So, let's see if you have been paying attention. Let me see. Cecilia Melgar. How can I use could in the negative way? Can you give me an example? Okay. Um, could, uh, couldn't. Um, for example, I... Um, okay. Wait for me. <laughs> um, I don't know, teacher. Maybe. Uh, Así es I, como couldn't, lo agarrar, I couldn't. <laughs> it I, could be. Um, he uh -huh. couldn't wash the car. He, oh. could, he couldn't wash the car. No pudo yeah. lavar el carro. Thank you very much. Okay. Let me see. Um, Lisette. Lisette Mont. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, Lisette, uh -huh. can you give me a sentence, a question, or something using the model verb shall? Shall. Shall. Not teacher. <laughs> uh -huh. What about you, Luis Enrique? A child, a child be early uh, in the English, English class. Okay. 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 That's a very good example. I shall be early for the English class. Okay, very good, thank you very much. Tatiana Pleites, can you give me an example using wood? I can hear you. I'm sorry? Repeat me again. Can you give me an example using wood? Good, good. Mm -hmm. I don't know, teacher. Okay, lo vamos a poner a todos a prueba. In the chat, guys. I'm sorry? I will change the carpet. I will change the what? Carpet. Okay. Al, um, alfombra, carpet. Oh, the carpets. Okay, very good. Yes, that's a good example. Now, all of you, todos, through the chat, give me an example of one sentence, question, or whatever, using or two. Or two. Now, all of you, todos. No quiero los mismos que ya dive, ¿ah? Ponga a trabajar esa mente. O two. Mm. 
they go out to go in the park. Yeah, write it, write it on the chat. Ah, okay. Yeah, very good. Thank you so much, Lisa, Jacqueline. Excellent, Luis. Okay, very good, Cecilia. Okay, very good. They ought to live in the cinema. Okay, what do you mean by Adrián Enríquez? What do you mean? Salir, pero no sé si. <laughs> oh, salir. Uh-huh, salir. Cause, cause in... Pero no sé si es salir. Le ave, le ave. Oh, That's, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Porque ahí dice yeah. ellos deberían vivir. Uh, vivir. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> you ought to go to the market. We ought to help the tourists. They ought to go. Okay, Maria Luz de Nieto. What is, uh, can everyone, todos pueden ver uh, the chat. So Maria Luz de Nieto, what is missing in your sense? Oh, they ought to go. Thank you very much. Okay. Very good. Let me see. I ought to call my boss. She ought to visit the doctor. He ought to wash his shoes. You ought to practice your yeah, accent. Okay, very good. I'm impressed. Estoy impresionado. So it means that you understood it correctly. And the last one, guys, give me an example of a sentence, question, or whatever using might. Might. And with that, we will finish the class, okay? So, you ought to... Might or may? Might. Puede ser question, verdad? Question, sentence, whatever you want. She ought to work less, okay. Thank you very much, Cecilia. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by they might go out often, Lisa Montoya? What do you mean by that? A seguido, teacher. Salir, salir, así, ah, pero me faltó quizás comer, vea. <laughs> they might go out. Pero yo quiero decir, ellos deberían salir más seguido. Deberían. Are you sure that might? ¿Estás segura que might? We no, use it to... ah, no, debe. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ajá, should. Should. Uh -huh. O, o shall. No, should. Debería is should. should. But now we're asking you to give example using might. I might. can. Maria Veronica, why, why are you using can? Might go to the bike at school. Patricia Veronica, what are you trying to say when you say you might go to the bike at the school? You might tell me now, okay. May I go out with my parents? My grandmother might come. Might you help me, please? Yeah, my mother might go to the party. My mother might cook proposals. Might I go out? Okay, excellent. All right, very good. I can see that some, well, most of you are giving me some really good examples. So it means that you understood. So guys, I have, well, we actually had just one exercise about 
these ones, but we are going to try to do that tomorrow uh, after, after the class, okay? So uh, that's gonna be all for today, guys. Thank you so much for attending to the class. I hope to see you tomorrow at the same time and the same channel, okay? So before I go, is there any question? No, no teacher. Question. Okay, thank so you. thank you very much and have a good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Yes, I will send it to you right now. Thank you, teacher. See you okay, tomorrow. Okay, have a good night. Bye-bye. Good night. Thank you, teacher.